electricity and the atom. Now, as you know, electricity is an incredibly integral part of our society. It's everywhere. But what is it and where does it come from? In order to understand electricity, we're going to start small. At the atom, in fact. You see, electricity is all about subatomic particles, particularly the electrons. So let's start with a quick reminder of our atomic model. We have a central nucleus made up of protons and neutrons. Then around the outside that nucleus, we have a cloud of electrons. And we'll just show them as little particles moving around in kind of orbits. This is a model of our atom. Now, most interesting to us as we study electricity and physics are the charged particles. The protons have a positive charge and the electrons have a negative charge. We'll just ignore the neutrons for now as they have no charge. Now, the protons and electrons have the same amount of charge. We call it the elemental charge. But they each act quite differently. So we'll call the proton positive and we'll call the electron negative. A proton and electron together actually cancel each other out for a net charge of zero, thus the positive and the negative. So an atom that has the same number of protons and electrons would be considered overall neutral, that is, has no net charge. If the atom loses some of its electrons, well, then we would say it has a positive charge, more positives than negatives. We'd call this atom a positive ion, where ion just means it's not neutral. In the same way, if an atom has extra electrons in its electron cloud, then we would say it's a negative ion. Again, ion meaning that it's not neutral, and negative indicating that there are more electrons than protons. Notice that we keep talking about the atom losing or gaining electrons. What about the protons? Well, protons are part of the nucleus, which means they're kind of locked into place. The electrons are the particles that are free to move around a bit more. In some materials, the electrons can move just a little bit, while in others, the electrons are flowing all over quite easily. So we've hit the first really big idea with electricity. It has to do with charged particles within the atoms. Now, the second big idea has to do with the forces between these charged particles. Just like the moon is attracted to the Earth due to gravity, electrons are attracted to protons. Instead of gravity causing this force, the force is called an electrostatic force. Just like we can calculate and predict forces of gravity, thanks in part to Isaac Newton, we can also calculate and predict electrostatic forces, thanks in part to Charles Coulomb. Protons and electrons attract each other, just like gravity, and so it's fairly easy to visualize. But here's the part where it's a little more difficult to find a common analogy like gravity. The fact that like charges actually repel each other. For example, two electrons push each other away. We say they repel each other. It's the opposite of attracting them. They push each other away. And in the same way, two protons would actually push each other away. So, we can say that unlike charges attract. Positive and negatives, they attract each other, much like gravity. But like charges, they repel. Positives repel positives. Negatives repel negatives. Learning how to take advantage of these forces is the core to all the electricity that you see around you, all those electrical devices. In this tutorial, we looked at the source of electricity. We found that we had to look within the atom to find our source. And within the atom, we find protons and electrons. Protons are positively charged, while electrons are negatively charged. We also discovered that there are forces between these charged particles, and we call them electrostatic forces. They cause the unlike charges to attract each other, 
and they cause the like charges to repel each other. Understanding these core principles will allow us to build a solid knowledge about electrical phenomenon and all those electrical devices.